Good day, Great Tools. Welcome to the second lesson in week 15, looking at rates of reaction and extent of reaction. We are going to start looking at the factors that affect the rate of the reaction, and we are going to study just two of those factors in this lesson. But let's look overall at all the factors that affect the rate of the reaction. We're going to cover in this series of lessons the types of reactants, the surface area, which is also called the state of division of the solids, concentration of reactants, pressure of gas, temperature of the mixture, and whether or not there's a catalyst. But in this lesson, we're only going to be looking at these two, the type of reactants and surface area. Now, grade 12s, as I tell my students, I would like to be able to wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning and say, list the factors that affect the rate of reaction. And you guys should wake up, list the factors, and go back to sleep and not even realize that you've done it because that's how well you should know these factors that affect the reaction rate. Better advanced people will then know how each of these affect, which we are going to teach you. But right now, let's talk about these two specific ones, the type of reactants and the surface area. Now, obviously, some substances are more reactive than others. Okay, for example, paper on wood. If I put my desk pad onto my wooden thing and I write with it with the carbon edge of the pencil, obviously none of those react, things react with each other, which is just as well because I'd hate to start writing on this page and it to burst into flames because it is sitting on a wooden desk. However, some substances, as you will see in the next slide in the video, react very violently when coming into contact with each other. So in this last video, you saw how sodium reacted with water and it reacted very vigorously. So that talks about the react types of reactants. Okay, we talk about wood and paper which don't react with each other and then sodium and water which react very vigorously. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about surface area and how that affects the rate of reaction. Let's chat with one of my learners, Kanye. She has a problem and has asked for help. I think it's related to reaction rates. Hello and thank you for agreeing to help me with my problem. It's a pleasure. I like learners who want to know how things work. Well, often when I study for exams, I get a headache and I'll take a headache tablet, but it takes a long time for it to go away. So I was wondering if there's a quicker way for it to go away because I can't study when I've got a headache and it takes up so much of my study time. The time it takes for your headache to go away will depend on the medication. I know that advertisers say that tablets in a powder form work quicker than tablets that are in a solid form. Well, I don't understand how that works because aren't they both supposed to have the same amount of substance? Well, let's do an investigation to find out if the advertisers' claims are true. I have two of the same headache tablets here. Now, I'll crush one of the tablets so that it's in a powdered form and leave the other one whole. To test if there is any difference between the action of the single tablet and the powdered form, I'll place them in different beakers with the same amount of water. Which one do you think will change quickest? I think it will be the tablet in powdered form. Let me check with my stopwatch. Good. This will be our hypothesis for our investigation. The tablet in powdered form will react faster than a whole tablet. Now, let's prove or disprove our hypothesis. Kanye, please use your stopwatch to time how long it takes for the chemical substance in each beaker to react fully. Watch carefully to see what might happen next. When a chemical reaction happens, we will usually see a change in color or gas bubbles rising. Kanye, start the stopwatch as soon as I put the tablets into the water. What are the results of our investigation? 
While the chemicals in the tablet produce bubbles when added to water, which tells us that there's some sort of reaction going on. The powder tablet took 55 seconds to finish producing bubbles, and the whole tablet took 2 minutes and 25 seconds to finish its reaction. And what does that tell us about our hypothesis? That our hypothesis was correct, I think. Yes. So we can make a conclusion. The tablet in powdered form reacted faster than the whole tablet. I can see the whole tablet and the powder made bubbles in water. But why are the times different? We use the same reactants from identical tablets and the same amount of water. That's because the reaction rates of the two reactions were different. The reaction rate, or rate of reaction, is the amount of product formed in a certain time. After 55 seconds, all of the crushed tablet reacted, while some of the uncrushed tablet remained unreacted. We say that the reaction rate for the crushed tablet is high because more product formed in 55 seconds compared to the solution containing the whole tablet. Chemists use collision theory to explain why there is a difference in reaction rates for different reactions. When a small number of collisions takes place in a certain time, few product particles form and we say the rate of reaction is low. When lots of collisions take place in a certain time, more particles of the product form and we say the reaction rate is high. I get it. The powder tablet reacted faster than the whole tablet because of the effective collisions between the water particles and the small particles of the tablet as compared to the whole tablet and the water particles around it. That's right, Kanye. When we crush a solid like the tablet, we are increasing the surface area of the solid. If we increase the surface area of a solid reactant, then we also increase the contact points where particles can collide. And so, there is an increase in the number of effective collisions taking place. Because of this, more product molecules form in a short time, so the reaction rate increases. If we change the surface area of other solid reactants, would we also increase the rate of reaction? Let's try it and see. Can you predict which will have a higher rate of reaction? 2 grams of powdered zinc or 2 grams of zinc granules, both placed in a sample of the same hydrochloric acid. I have added some dishwashing liquid to trap the gas released. Watch and see what happens. Can you see that bubbles of hydrogen are forming more quickly in the test tube with the powdered zinc? This means that the rate of reaction for the powdered zinc is higher than for the zinc granules. It looks like there was more foam formed when the powdered zinc reacted than when the zinc granules did. Is that correct? That's a good observation, Kanye. Let's have a closer look at the test tubes. Can you see that most of the powdered zinc has reacted, but the zinc granules are still producing bubbles? We started with exactly the same amount of reactants, so eventually we will produce exactly the same amount of products. So, to summarize, Though so far we've learnt about the nature of the reactants and surface area. Nature reactants is basically just dependent on how the electrons and outer electron shells, the valence electrons, react in the different materials. Surface area, what we have learnt is that the greater the surface area, the greater the reaction rate. Okay, the greater the surface area, the greater the reaction rate. Right, please, grade 12, go learn these two factors that affect rates of reaction and how they do. And in the next lesson, we will carry on looking at factors that affect rates of reaction. Have a great day.